Hi, welcome to lesson five of week three, Julia Programming for Nervous Beginners. And this is about the use of anonymous functions for iteration. And our aim is just to explain and illustrate the use of anonymous functions in iterations. So after this lesson, you'll be able to use this operator syntax. This is uh, what you might call the arrow syntax. It's a minus uh, character and a bigger than character together and they make an anonymous, you can use them to write an anonymous function, they map input to output. The map function can then be used to iterate an anonymous function over an array or a range. Uh, it doesn't have to be an anonymous function, but the purpose of this lesson is an anonymous uh, function uh, in that position. Similarly, filter will iterate uh, an anonymous function over an array or a range, and uh, one of the important things is to distinguish between what map does and what filter does. Okay, so an anonymous function is simply a function without a name. So we've been used to using names to create functions, whether inline functions or with the more extended syntax starting with a keyword function. Uh, now there's going to be no name at all. And the main purpose is to define a function as briefly as possible for local use, after which it is discarded. The functions uh, we have seen so far, by contrast, all have names that stay in the namespace so that the functions remain available to the programmer. So uh, the operator is, as I say, this arrow operator, and you can have x and then arrow, and I remind you that it's a, a, a minus sign followed by a greater than sign. And we map x onto x squared, so, or in other words, for input x, return x squared. So exactly the same function is z maps onto z squared. There's nothing any special about either of these variable names. You could use any variable name as long as it occurs as a variable name by itself on the left and then with the repeat or the square on the right. Okay, so let's do a map um, for this function, x to x squared, I haven't got the minus x, I put that there and like that. And what do I want to do it over? I want to do it over the range. If I do this as a comprehension, then I would just say like this, x squared for x in. So now we have x squared for x in that array, a, b, c, and two. a, b, c, and 2.0. And indeed, ABC actually works. We can actually erase ABC to a repeat of two, and we multiply that by that, so that also works. And then we want to iterate just over the string by itself. And that doesn't work. But if we put it inside an array, then it works. So I'm sorry about the typing here. This is for the underlying structure, not for the, the map itself. Um, so this is how we would actually map over a string. We first extract the string to its characters and then we loop over the characters. We loop over the characters in the string and we say y in, uh, sorry, we create an array y equals x for x in, and we're using the same string as before, a, b, c. If we want uh, it all joined back into a string, well, this is just an array of strings, and so we could, in fact, join them. Uh, 
if we wanted to indicate that there's spaces between them, then we can have join with the delimiter that, uh, or the separator between them by just using an empty uh, string with one uh, space. Let's uh, do one of the squares um, just for the range minus 3 to 5, but let's make the formula slightly longer just to indicate that one can use long formulae. Uh, let's, uh, I, sorry, I wanted that to be minus 5 to 3, and that goes from 16 to 16. It's always positive, or rather it's always non-negative. It does include 0. Okay, so that's for maps. Um, the a map can go over a range and or array, but it can't go over a string, and that's actually true also for filter. The difference between a filter and a map is that the map returns an array which has one element in the array for every element in the range or every element in the input. A filter, so map has one element for every element in the input, so from minus 5 to 3 there are 9 elements, there are 9 elements there. If we want to filter, um, then what we have, we use the anonymous function to create a value which is either true or false. And whenever that value is true, the, the actual element from the iterable is put into the array. So it creates a, a kind of subarray taken from the original array only for those items for which the test is true. So the comparison operators also work on characters, and so let's look at this expression. Y is uh, the array of characters where X is my A1 jag is XJ6. And then we filter on that. We keep only those characters in Y. So Y, there's Y. That's what we're doing the filter of. Here's Y, the characters in the string. And we are going, when this is true, we're going to keep it. So when the character is less than the character A by character comparison, then we keep whatever the character is in this string. And um, so y equals x for x in the string my a1 jag is xj6. That's the y. And then we create the filter, which is um, x maps onto something which is either true or false, x less than the character a by character comparison. That's the test. It applies to the elements of the array y, and it creates an array only of those elements in y for which the test returns true. So, um, capital M, capital I, capital, uh, and space, all the spaces. It's also true for spaces. So it's capital M and the space, capital I and the spaces, spaces, and the X, the J, and the 6, but not the lowercase y, or A, or G, or I, or S. We can just replace um, from filter to map, um, and see what happens. If we map it, we get a set of values which is true or false, so all of these values that are true, and so there are five false values out of the 16 elements that get removed, and uh, that means 11 elements remain. If instead
I go back to filter and I make it filter bang, I get that 11 elements. But now if I ask what Y is, Y is only 11 elements. So filter bang modifies Y. It, uh, the new Y that has been created, the, sorry, the new array that has been created replaces the old Y, modifies its input. Comprehensions. So um, if we apply a function to x, where x is the, uh, taken from the range from minus 5 to 3, then we are applying the value of a function to the values of a range and we're putting them in an array and that's how comprehensions work. So if we use x squared plus 2x minus 1 for x in 5 to 3, then the result is identical. This comprehension is identical to the, uh, creates an array identical to the array created by this map. And they use exactly the same formula and they iterate over exactly the same iterable. So why should we have map when we can do the same thing using comprehension? And again, the answer is convenience. The map structure has possibilities that comprehensions do not have, and I haven't by any means given you all of them already. Um, we could affect uh, the same thing with a for loop, but the code would not be as compact nor as easy to read. On the other hand, uh, map are not always that easy to read. So when you get branching code, as we have been seeing in this lesson, code can get quite significantly harder to read and to write. But uh, on this course, we don't ask for things that are complicated. And as long as you stay with simple things, you can get nice effects. Um, so a for loop can also do what filter does, but in this case, we also have that the resulting array may be shorter than the one you started with, um, which is a topic beyond the scope of this course. So let's just review. When we have a variable is arrowed to an expression, it makes an anonymous function for the input variable and uh, with a function body expression acting to return value for every value of the input variable. And if you now put it in map, then any function over an iterable returns an array of values made by calling function for every element in the iterable. If we filter and we have a test function which returns values that are either true or false, and we run that over the iterable, then it returns uh, an array. And only those values in iterable for which this is true is in the array that is returned. You can have an iterable that is an array or a range, but you cannot have a string. And the function filter bang can replace the array on which it is called rather than creating a new one. And that's the end of week three. So I hope that you do the assignment, do everything that is needed, and we'll see you for week four.